Next, we have features of online service. And the two main things we're going to be focusing on here are cloud storage and cloud computing. Oh, spelled that wrong. On cloud computing. So first and foremost, what is cloud storage? Cloud storage uses data centers with massive computer servers that physically store the data and make it available online for users via the web. So think of cloud storage services. For example, Amazon has their own cloud thing. Google has Google Drive. Microsoft has Microsoft OneDrive. Uh, Apple has iCloud. Those are cloud services where you can simply store your files. Now, the difference between cloud storage and cloud computing, cloud storage is only for storing files. Cloud computing is where you can actually get some work done. So cloud computing here, let's look at what is cloud computing, is a delivery is the delivery of different services through the internet, including data storage, servers, databases, networking, so on and so forth. So I like to combine these two things. So cloud storage, like OneDrive is a really good cloud storage and cloud computing service. It's a cloud storage service because you can store all your files there, right? It's also cloud computing because I can create a PowerPoint, an Excel file, a Word document on Microsoft OneDrive and edit it completely from OneDrive. Now, this Word document or whichever file I create will never be on my personal PC or my personal phone unless I actually download it. So I'm actually doing the work on a server somewhere else. So the work is being done remotely on a server where I am sending the instructions from my PC. The use of cloud storage in personal and professional use is more or less the same because of what it is inherently, right? It's cloud storage, you're gonna store stuff there. So the stuff that normal people like you and I would store in the cloud would be images, uh, maybe some music, some video, some documents, whereas companies like your school, your workplace, your college, they might store an entire backup, right? It's always good to have multiple backups in different places. So I might have one in the IT department. I might have another one locked away somewhere in a cupboard in an English department where no one normally goes. But it might make sense for me to have a full site backup, meaning backup the entire system on off the school's network, for example, or the school's files onto Microsoft OneDrive. So this is how companies normally use it. And again, it's because it's so easily accessible it just makes sense. So rather than having a site backup um, and the building burns down or someone actually accidentally goes into the English department and finds that drive that you have, you can simply download the backup again onto any PC and deploy it or send it out to the computers that need it. So just like cloud storage, cloud computing is also done um, by people on the internet, whether it be personal or professional. A good example I like to give is this website called Photopia, right? This website called Photopia is essentially Photoshop online, completely free, that's been run on another server somewhere in the world. So rather than me having to install Photoshop, my laptop doesn't have that much storage, for example. I want to edit an image quickly. Um, I want to do something quickly on Photoshop, right? Rather than me installing a file that's going to take a very long time to download, a very long time to install, and even more time to open and run it efficiently, I might as well use this website. Look how fast this is moving. I can go file, new. I can choose a random template from here. I can choose something from here. Uh, let see if that actually, yeah, and there we go. I have my postcard finished in three clicks, whereas it would take maybe an hour to, to download and fully set up my Photoshop on a very old, a very slow laptop. So this is how people and even some companies use um, online computing, so cloud computing. Another big, big, big one, again, I'm going to go back to Microsoft OneDrive, is cloud computing there. So rather than having someone download Office on, on, onto their PC and download Excel and download Word and PowerPoint, using OneDrive makes it very easy. Not only can I simply open a Chrome browser or a Chrome tab and edit my Word document and have another tab editing my Excel spreadsheet and another tab editing my PowerPoint, but when it comes to sharing that information with someone else, I don't have to email anyone a, a static file that they have to update and send back to me and say we have to keep sending back and forth right the benefit one massive benefit of having something like onedrive as a cloud computing platform is that while i'm editing my file i can give someone else the link and i can say can you please go ahead and fill in your section of this same document and whilst i'm typing in that document someone else can be typing in that that same document the section that they need to work on now there are some inherent risks with a system like this. However, 
if you're within a company and certain rules and policies have to be followed, this makes a lot of sense. So imagine person A, person B, and person C need to work on a project for Friday, but they're in different locations around the world. Person A is in the Caribbean, person B is in America, and person C is in the UK. Rather than emailing each other files back and forth, we have one single PowerPoint, one single Word document, and person A has their section to fill in. Person B and person C have the same thing. And we can all check what the other person is doing on our time. The Caribbean, some places in the Caribbean are five hours behind, uh, five, six hours behind the UK. So is America. So rather than everyone having to be up at the same time, we can simply fill in what we need to fill in on our time. So it's very, very convenient. It's also very cheap. Buying Microsoft Office for three separate people is roughly going to be, I don't know, 60 to 100 pounds per person. OneDrive, if you're a company, a very small company, five or 10 people working around the world, you can use OneDrive completely free. You don't have to pay anything. Each person has their OneDrive account and they share files in that way, completely free. However, if you were a larger company, you pay, I don't know, let's just say for argument's sake, a couple hundred or a thousand pounds per month and you have up to a hundred employees and you have unlimited storage and they can do as much as they want, still much, much, much cheaper than buying Microsoft Office for individual people. So here we have a few examples of the advantages and disadvantages of cloud storage. So it says cost. Cloud is going to be very cheap compared to buying a hard drive every time you need it. I pay £1.60 um, pence per month for 100 gigabytes of online storage. It's easily accessible, so I can actually access my OneDrive, or sorry, my Google Drive or OneDrive from my phone, my laptop, my tablet, and even my smart TV now. So I have access to those files anywhere I am around the world once I have the internet. Um, recovery says, in the event of a hard drive failure, um, you can always go there and recover stuff, okay? So let's say I'm backing up all my stuff to the cloud. If my hard drive dies, worst case, I spend 30, 50 pounds on a new hard drive or SSD, put that in my computer, download all my files, and I'm good to go again. Syncing and updating is very good as well. As I said, I actually prefer to work from cloud storage, from OneDrive and Google Drive. Uh, one basic reason, when I actually type on Google Drive, I don't have to save anything. As soon as I stop typing, as soon as I type my very last word, it saves the entire document and it updates it as well. And I can actually go back and check the history to see what I've done. So let, I can say, this is what I did on Monday. This is stuff I did on Tuesday. It tells me, gives me all the detail I want. So cloud storage providers provide an additional layer of security. That is very true. Uh, this is, can also be a downside, but I'll get to that later. But the security that you have on your one PC at home with maybe rub some rubbish antivirus you have like norton or kaspersky which are really bad by the way you should probably stick to the windows one it's not going to be the same as a big massive rich money heavy company like microsoft microsoft microsoft's own antivirus that they have on their own servers on their own pc is going to be way better than the thing that you spent 30 40 pounds on right so now we have disadvantages of cloud storage Internet connection. You need to always have an internet connection. If you don't have an internet connection, there's no use of cloud for you. It's just not possible. That's a downside. So um, there are outages around the world. Here in the UK, we don't have them as often. But again, smaller countries, poorer countries where the internet is very, well, just uh, not stable, this could be an issue. Cost. You tend to have to pay on a monthly basis. And if you don't pay, you don't get the storage. Whereas if you have a hard drive, you can add as much as you want. When it's full, you delete what you don't want and you keep going back and forth. So you don't have that constant cost every month of doing it. Hard drives. Um, some companies still have to have hard drives to use cloud storage properly. Amazon Web Services, again, this is a very detailed description of what's needed. Just know that some companies have to first back up stuff to a hard drive and then back up the stuff from the hard drive to the cloud. That's how it works in some cases. Now it says here, support for cloud storage isn't the best, especially when using free services. That is kind of true. You're going to have a problem getting through to someone if you're not paying for their service, right? However, um, I tend to put so many things in place, so I don't delete a file. I normally move it to another folder to review if I need to delete that file later on. And privacy, when you use a cloud provider, you're putting your trust in their hands. You're saying, okay, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, I trust you with my most personal data. Please don't leak it to the entire world. Please don't leak images of my brand new baby to the entire world. But anything could happen. If that, if, if that company gets hacked or if, or, if, or if they change their policies, I think Google, for example, um, they used to offer free 
Google image backup for everyone unlimited. But what they used to do, they used to actually train their artificial intelligence on your images. So the images that you upload for free for backup, they feed that information to their AI to teach it how to recognize things and people.